Hello and welcome. I'm Barbara Hitching and this is Transformative Tuesday. Have you ever been bullied? I have. It's not a fun place to be. And bullying makes you feel small. It makes you feel helpless and like you have no value, no dignity, like you're a nothing. We lived in the country when I was a child and when I was in second grade, the bus driver would stop outside my house every morning to pick me up. And then I was the last person on the bus at the end of the day, and he'd drop me off and then he'd go off home. Well, he always stopped outside my home and let me off, and he would watch while I crossed the road. But then two brothers moved in up the road. And Orville decided that it would be right and fair to stop in the middle of their house and my house. Now, the thing was, they were seventh and eighth graders, and I was in second grade. So when he would drop us off about a block from my home and wave goodbye and pull away back off of off the gravelly verge onto the two-lane road and drive off into the distance around the bend, these two brothers would turn from going their direction and turn toward me. Well, the first time it happened, I was just happily walking home when I got hit by a stone. And I turned around and looked, and both boys were running with their hands full of stones and throwing, getting ready to throw. And when I realized, I took off running, and many of the stones whizzed by me. But as the days passed, they got good at target practice, and I was the target. I was the prey. They were the predators, and I was the target. And this happened, and I can remember I used to bounce off the bus all happy and and just cheerful, and I would sit in my seat, and I would be so frightened. And these boys would walk by me and get off the bus like nothing was happening. And Orville would turn and look at me and say, Barbara, get off the bus. It's time to go home. And I would be so scared because I knew if I got off the bus, I was going to get hit. Well, this happened for some days. I don't know how long. And then one day, it was really, really bad. And I had been hit many times. Now, when I reached a certain place of our yard, there were lilac bushes that stood about six feet high. And I would dive into those bushes because once I was inside those bushes, I was safe. And those bullies couldn't hit me anymore. And I remember that day just collapsing on the ground, in the dirt, under the bushes, just sobbing as though my heart would break. And all of a sudden, there was a voice. Barb, are you okay? And it was my elder brother, Lee. And he bent down and crawled in under the bushes beside me and listened to my story. And when he realized what had happened, he said, it's okay, Bob. It's going to be okay. Come with me. And he took me by the hand and he led me out from under the bushes on our side of in the yard. And he took me to his bike. Now, he had a Schwinn, and it was tall because he was 16. And he loved motors, and he had put a motor on the bike. So he got on the bike, and then he helped me get on the back behind him and made sure, don't put your legs near the motor. You'll get burnt. So he was very clear what I was to do and then told me, hang on to me. So I grabbed him around the waist and I held tight. And we took off up the road. And when we got to the lane, 
He turned off onto the lane, and these two boys were outside playing ball. And they looked up because they could hear us coming with the motor. And my brother Lee turned back because I was holding him really tight now because I was scared. And he said, are those the ones? Yes, they are the ones. And so he slowed the bike. And slowly we went by their house, up the lane. Then he did a U-turn and slowly came back. And all the time he was staring at them. And they were frozen. They didn't move. They were watching. They didn't know what was going to happen. When we got past their house, Lee gunned the, the motor and we took off. And when we got home, I said, Lee, why didn't you beat them up? And he tousled my hair and said, Barb, I didn't need to. They're not going to bother you ever again. Don't worry. And it was true. They never bothered me again. Why am I telling you this story? The Lord brought this story back to me just this past week as a result of an exercise I was doing in a class learning to write. And as I was writing, the Lord showed me that my brother was like Christ. He modeled Jesus. My elder brother got down into the dust with me. He came where I was hiding, right where I was. He listened to me. He validated me. He saw that what I was crying about was legitimate. He heard me. And so Lee validated me. And then he did something very curious. You see, when I was walking on my own feet, in my own authority, I was a victim. I had no protection, no safety, nowhere to hide except under these bushes. And the bushes couldn't comfort me. But Lee came down with me under those bushes, and then he lifted me up and put me on the back of his bike. And as he did, something incredible happened because as we drove by those boys' house, I was no longer a victim. I belonged. I was a princess. I had value. I had dignity. I had personhood. The shame was gone. My brother was with me. And he gave me dignity. He gave me courage. And he gave me safety. And what he also did was he demonstrated to those boys that I rested not under lilac bushes, but under his favor. And his authority covered me. I was safe under his authority. And that meant they had to treat me with respect. Why? I was the same person, but they treated me with respect because they knew who I was. I was the apple of my brother's eyes, and they knew to touch me would be to touch my brother and bring judgment on themselves. Who does that remind you of? If we think about this, so often we take that identity as a victim and we don't see ourselves as who we really are. I love the verse in Zechariah 2.8, and it says, He who touches you touches the apple of my eye. That is God speaking. If you belong to him, anyone who touches you touches him. And the day will come 
when they will have to give an account because they are touching the apple of his eye. Are you the apple of God's eye? I hope so. Do you tell yourself, I'm the apple of my Lord's eyes? When you're struggling with identity and you feel worthless, like nothing, it is so important to be able to stand in the truth of who you are and say, I am the apple of my daddy's eyes. I am the apple of the Lord Jesus' eyes. I am love. I am value. I belong. Yes, it is comforting, isn't it? I love that verse. I want us to look at Ephesians 2. It says, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you formerly walked, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. According to the prince of the power of the air, you are a victim. He's the predator, and you're the prey, and he targets you. Of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them we, too, all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. But God being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, even when we were victims, even when we felt worthless and like nothing, he has made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and he has raised us up and seated us with Christ in heavenly places. If you know Jesus as your Savior, then God has lifted you up in Christ Jesus and set you there with Jesus. Just as my brother lifted me up out of the dust and put me on his bike in his embrace and took me down the road, the Lord lifts you up. You are in the embrace of Christ. And God seats you in heavenly places, giving you dignity and honor and value. He treats you with respect. And so when the enemy comes in like a flood, stand in the truth of who you are in Christ. Raise that banner of love over yourself. Stand in dignity because you stand in Christ. You're not standing on your own feet on the dirt, but you're standing on the rock. Jesus Christ, the rock. Are you seated today in heavenly places? I hope so. If you're not, Know this, the Lord loves you, and he gave Jesus to come to be your Savior. As my brother, my elder brother, got down in the dust with me, Jesus Christ came down into this world, into the dust and filth of humanity, because he wanted to be your elder brother. If you receive him, if you receive the gift of his life, he will come into you and wash you clean from sin, and he will be your elder brother. And as your elder brother, you have authority to stand no matter what happens, whether it's COVID or the finances collapsing around you, whether it's the government or your job or disagreeable people or people that are doing wrong and being bullies, no matter what happens in this world, you will stand in authority 
the authority of your elder brother because you're seated with him in heavenly places and God is your daddy. That means you are either a prince or a princess. So just as I was moved out of that place of victimization where I felt like a princess with my brother, the Lord lifts you up and makes you a prince or a princess. He even makes you priests, his priests. What a wonderful Savior we have. I'd like to pray for you now. Father, I thank you for the cross. I thank you that because of Calvary, we can experience forgiveness of sins. We can have our name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We can be seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. Father, thank you for that wonderful truth. Thank you that you love us with an everlasting love. And as you have lifted us up, you want to bless us with these beautiful words. You are a chosen race. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession so that you may proclaim the excellencies of Jesus who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, once you were a victim, once you were lost, but you have been found, and you now are the child of of the Most High God. Once you had no mercy, you experienced abuse or trauma, discouragement, pain, but now you have received mercy, the mercy of the Heavenly Father who loves you and gave his Son so that you might live forever in a place of shelter and safety under his authority. So I want to bless you with the blessing that you might stand strong in the power of his might, that you might stand in the authority of your elder brother, the Lord Jesus Christ. I'd love to talk to you. If you have any questions or concerns or if some, someone's hurting you, please message me. You can private message me or you can message below. And I would love to pray for you and I would love to be there to help if there's anything I can do to help. So the Lord bless you. You are loved. Christ came to lift you up out of darkness into light. I love you. Take care. Bye-bye.